So whether you're new to animation or a veteran, one of the most basic things that you can do when it comes to creating an asset is creating a rig to control geometry. And so one of the first things we're going to talk about today is creating a bone, uh, bone or a joint structure to create an IK leg deformation. So to begin with, we need geometry and we need to create bones. So let's have a look at that. So here's our base geometry. Essentially, I just have a very simple leg and I've actually used deformers on the geometry to mirror from left to right just to keep things simple. Uh, now, normally when you're working on a model, you may have an entire mesh where it's been created as one unified mesh. That's not necessarily a good or a bad thing, it just depends on your chosen workflow. Now, in my case, I've created a, I've created one leg with the pivot point aligned at origin, and then I applied a mirror deformer just to give me a left and a right leg. This I find in Blender makes it very easy to uh, set up weights and skinning later on when you're trying to set up the deformation and it makes it very easy to make modifications to both the model and the weights. So now that we have our geometry, let's create the armature. Creating an armature is very easy. An armature is basically going to be a rig, uh, like in Maya, uh, but in this case we're going to Press Shift A on the keyboard, and we'll get this little menu, and we can choose Armature, and it'll create our first bone. Now, by default, when you add an armature, the radius is usually set to one. I usually increase this to about five, just so I can see something on my screen. But you can make it something like ten, or you can leave it at five, and then just go in directly and edit it. And to edit, you just select the armature itself and you press your tab key to enter edit mode or you can go in your upper left hand corner and choose edit mode from there. Now don't forget when you're in Blender what you have selected is going to affect what switches into edit mode. If I have the geometry selected that will switch into edit mode. So in this case I want to edit my armature so press tab and I switch that in edit mode. Now in this case we have our starting bone and I'm just going to pull the tail the end of your joint, uh, the basically the narrowest end, is usually considered the tail, and the thickest end is considered the head, which is down here at the bottom. So I've got my main bone here. I'm going to go over to my properties, and I'm going to choose the bone. You've got the data for the armature, and then you've got the specific bone. And under bone, I'm going to disable deform. Uh, just because this first bone I'm going to use as sort of the main or the base of my rig. I'm going to just call that my main. Now don't forget you want to name every bone that you create so that it makes it a little easier to keep track of things when you're skinning. Also when you're setting up uh, various controls and constraints and things like that. So I'm going to take my bone, I'm going to go to my side view because it's usually easier to align things that way. And I'm going to shift D to duplicate it so I can create a cog or a root for my armature. I'm just going to pull that straight up here and I'm just going to leave that in zero on the X and the Y just so it's centered. I'm going to leave that right there at the top and then I'm going to select that one. I'm going to shift select my main and I'm press control P and I'm going to parent it keeping offset and this is so that when I eventually start moving things around, everything will follow. And now the bone that I, I duplicated, I'm going to call that my cog, center of gravity, or you can call it your root, depending on how you want to uh, build the rig. And I'm going to re-enable deformation for the cog, because I want the cog to actually control part of the mesh later on. Uh, let's say if it was inside of a body, you definitely want the cog, or other joints or bones in this case. And so now usually what I do with my, my bone structure is I also create, uh, I'm going to go to my side view again, 
and I'm going to select the head of the cog and press E on my keyboard to extrude to create my next joint or my next bone. I'm going to pull this down. Usually when I create a bone structure, I create a central hip or center uh, hip to pivot things on just because I find it's more useful when it comes to posing during animation. And then I'm also going to extrude out from that hip once again and create yet another bone. And this is going to be my left hip. And this allows me to create some sort of offset for that central hip if I need it, just increasing the range of movement. And again, when you're creating your bones, make sure that you're labeling everything specifically. Now, usually when I'm creating uh, joints in Maya, which are joint, uh, Maya's version of bones, uh, I usually label them something like JN underscore hip, for example. Um, but in Maya, you're usually going to create additional controls that need to have specific names as well. So you usually have different categories of naming to keep things separated and organized. But in this case, since I'm going to, since Blender doesn't necessarily need a separate tier of controls, I'm just going to name everything directly and just to keep it short and to the point because a lot of these bones are actually going to become controls later on. So now that I have my hip, I'm going to select the tail of my left hip, go to my side view, and I'm going to, again, E, extrude, to create bones for the leg itself. Now, usually when creating bones for the leg, I will just create the one first, and I'll position the tail where I think the ankle bone needs to be, or the ankle joint needs to be. And then I'll extrude out to create the ball. Extrude again to create bones for the toe. And then of course I'll go back through this and I need to break this large bone up so that I actually have a thigh and a knee, or if I need multiple joints there, I can do that as well. And it's really simple, select your bone, and then just right click, and from the menu you can choose subdivide. And you can split it into just two uh, by default. It'll just cut it once, but you can come down here into the properties of the, or the history of this creation, and you can tell it to subdivide it more depending on what you're creating. Now, of course, I just need to subdiv just divide it once so, because I just need the thigh and the knee or the femur and whatever you want to call it. But basically, I just need two separate bones. And so I'm going to grab the head of my knee and I'm going to pull it down a little bit. Now, just like in my, you want to make sure that there is a slight bend when it comes to the knee. It doesn't have to be extreme. It can be very small, almost nothing at all, but it has to be enough so that the system recognizes that it's there. And this is so that when you actually add your IK, it knows in which direction to bend the leg by default. And so I'm going to grab the head of my thigh bone. And I'm just going to pull this down a little bit so it's in more of a position where I want it. Now usually you're going to have your thigh and then you'll have a little bit of the pelvis here. And so usually in that case, I'll usually have my thigh sort of angled back a little bit like this. So it's a little bit more in the, just a little bit inside of the meaty area of the gluteus. Okay, so I've got my thigh, my knee, I'll call this my ankle and this will be like the ball of my foot and so you want to go through and actually label those things accordingly so ball dot l and i'm doing dot l dot capital l to let blender know which side of the body it's going to be on now remember when you're talking about rigging and modeling when you're actually looking at your character from the front, everything you're looking at 
you want to label based on the perspective of the model and the rig itself, not based on your perspective. So what would be your right is actually the character's left. So when I'm labeling these bones that I'm creating, I'm creating them on the character's left. And so they're going to be called left. And so this is going to be my left knee. So knee dot L. And I'm doing the L last because when you actually start using Blender's ability to mirror things across, it's going to look at that, look for that dot L to determine what's left and right, and it will automatically label things accordingly. So I'll call this my thigh dot left. And so now I have all of these labeled. Now if I wanted to mirror these things across right now, I could. All I have to do is select all of them. I can just drag select them like that, and right click on the bones, and I can choose symmetrize. And when I symmetrize, it automatically mirrors things perfectly across and also relabels things as well. Okay, so you don't have to do that right away uh, because right now we just want to focus on the one leg. And so now we actually have our bones in a place to begin. And so we've got everything looking pretty good. If we want to check your orientation, by the way, all you have to do is select the armature under properties, go to data, and you want to tell to activate axes. And that will actually display the pivot points of all of your bones. And so you can make sure that the orientation is consistent. So in this case, everything's going to rotate in a consistent way. The Y is flowing through the structure consistently. The X is aiming outward on all of them, or down, depending on where you're looking. And so the orientation is consistent from top to bottom. Now, in order to actually create an IK for this, we're going to need a couple more things. So if we, when you're creating an IK structure, uh, in Maya, it would automatically create a basic handle so that you can actually pull the end of your IK. But in Blender, you're going to actually create the control or the handle yourself, which is good because that handle will actually have a zero default. In Maya, the handle that's created by the, by, uh, the system there, it doesn't have a zero, so it sometimes makes it more difficult to work with when you're animating. So in this, we're going to select the ankle, and we're going to extrude in our Y to pull it straight out in front. And this is basically going to be the control for this leg. Now, currently this is connected into the IK structure. It's basically connected to our knee, and we don't want that because we want it to control the leg entirely. So you want to actually completely break it away from that. So we can right click on it and choose parent and clear, and then we can clear parent. And then that bone is completely disconnected from our joint structure or our bone structure or uh, armature's hierarchy. It's still part of the armature itself, but it's not part of the bone hierarchy. And so I'm going to, again, I'm going to come down, select this bone in properties, and I'm going to disable deform because we don't want this to receive any control over the mesh at all. So we make sure that it does not. And I'm going to call this one my uh, leg dot left because I want this one to control the entire left leg. And we're going to need something to control the aiming of the knee. And so I'm going to go up to my knee. I'm going to, again, extrude in the Y pull it straight forward here. It doesn't need to be that big. And again, we're going to clear and disconnect in this case. We could also do a, a completely clear the parent. Other one's fine for this one. This, In this case, we're going to pull this one forward because we want this one to be a little further out from the knee so that when the knee bends, things don't uh, flip because this one needs to actually control where the knee is aiming, so it needs to be a little further out ahead of the leg. And of course, depending on the geometry, you made it needed it behind or in front, depending on how your leg is actually going to bend and perform in general. Now, this one I will usually take, and I will shift select my leg control, and I'll parent my aim control to the leg, so that when this control, when this control moves around when I'm animating, that our aim will follow 
our leg perfectly so that when it's when we need it it's where we need it to be and again we're going to rename this one and since I already have a knee I usually call this one something like my knee aim dot left and so now we're mostly set to begin the next stage of our creation so I'm gonna select my knee here and our knee is basically going to be the the bottom of our IK structure. It's going to be the second bone that's going to be controlled by our IK. So we need to switch to pose mode in order to do this because most of these things that we're going to add now are considered uh, constraints. And you can only create those constraints when you're in pose mode. Now to go to pose mode, again with the bone selected, because remember object selection is important in Blender, you select pose mode. By default you're in object mode and then you go to pose mode. Now you can go to pose mode directly out of edit mode which is great because then you can just switch to pose mode for example you can hit tab and be back in edit mode for your rig and then you can press tab again and it'll take you back to the mode you were originally in. In this case if I started from pose mode it's easy to jump back and forth between the two and make little modifications. So right now I'm going to add an IK to this leg. Now to do that, all we need to do is select the bone we where we want the uh, end of our IK to anchor. We want it to anchor to the tail of our knee bone. So I'm going to press Shift I while in pose mode, while having that selected, and then we'll get the Add IK option. And I'm going to add it without targets, and this is because I'm going to specify with which targets I want it to control. If you do it with targets, it'll create these empties or uh, locator objects, which you may not necessarily want. And so now that I actually have a constraint on there, I can choose bone constraints under properties. And here I specify which armature I'm setting up my IK for. And so in this case, I'm setting it up for armature number one because I actually have a second armature in here that I demoed initially. Uh, let me actually label this one. I'll call this one my armature underscore demo, just so it's more distinct. Again, try to make sure you're labeling everything so it makes it a little easier for you to find things. Now, in this case, I want it to follow my leg left for that armature. And then I need to set up the pole vector targeting and that's going to be again choose the armature that you're targeting and then my knee aim okay and as you can see right away there was a response all right you can tell that our IK is connected now the reason why it's affecting the entire bone structure is because we didn't tell it we didn't limit it to a number of uh, bones to control within the hierarchy and so I'm going to go to chain length and tell it to control two in this case we're controlling the knee and the thigh. As you can see when I select the knee you'll get like a little dotted line that indicates the influence of the IK starting uh, anchored on this bone here. And as you can see as soon as I did that it flipped around and that's in response to the pull vector. And so what we need to do is we need to come in and tell it the pull angle. Now, sometimes, depending on the orientation, it'll flip like this or won't move at all. Uh, but if it twists around, then you just go in it and make sure you specify your pole angle. In this case, it's going to be negative 90 degrees. Uh, let me see. Is it negative 90? No, in this case, it's actually a bit more extreme. It's negative 180. So, sometimes that happens. Sometimes it's zero, sometimes it's 90, sometimes it's negative 90. It all, again, depends on the orientation of your bones. Okay, and so now we have our structure and we can actually test it. We can just select our leg control and we can just pull it up. And as you can see, we've got our IK joints responding nicely. Okay, now one other thing I like to do is I like to set it up so that when I'm grabbing my, my leg control here, is that it's actually going to keep the foot flat unless I rotate that leg control. And it's a very easy way to do that. Select your leg control, shift select the ankle, which is basically going to control the overall foot. 
angle and we're going to press control shift C and under uh, constraint which is going to get this huge pop-up window that shows all the various constraints we can add to bones I'm going to choose copy rotation and as you can see it immediately matches it but we want it to maintain this default angle so under add bone constraint under properties we want to go to target and we want to set it to local space owner orientation and then we want to set the owner to local with parent and this basically tells it to pay attention to the existing hierarchy and existing default angle and all that stuff and to make sure that our ankle bone that's going to respond to the rotation changes of our leg control here it's telling it to maintain its default position but to add or should I say replace the rotation values being fed into this angle so it's basically going to copy whatever rotations occur on our leg are going to happen to our foot okay and this so everything rotates accordingly and of course to get everything still have a little bit of a rotation on that I'm going to zero that out by press, selecting it and pressing Alt R to zero out the rotations and just in case I can press Alt G to make sure that there's no translation on that as well so now let's say you want to uh, get the right side set up as well it's very easy instead of having to rebuild the entire thing over again all you have to do is select all of your bones that are on the left side right click over the bones and choose symmetrize and it recreates not only the bones but also the various constraints uh, now this includes if you go back in and make some changes to settings on one of your bones on the left side for example and your constraints and things like that you can easily go in and just sim say symmetrize and it will also update those same settings on the right side making it very easy to not only build structures but also to modify your rigs and after that in order to get your geometry to follow your bones all you have to do is select the geometry shift select the armature press control P and they can choose with automatic weights or with envelope I usually do all with automatic weights and usually blender is pretty good at assigning our skins by default they may need a little cleanup but usually the default result is fairly nice now as long as I remembered to disable deformers or anything I didn't want to have weights I forgot about the uh, aim the aims there you want to make sure the aims don't have def deformation as well so don't forget to disable those before you do your skinning but since they are far away from it it shouldn't cause too much of a problem right now and we can always go into our geometry for example and go to its properties under shape and we can find those knee aims and we can actually remove them as influences just select them and minus them out but it's better to make sure you're only getting things that you want in there so again I'm gonna go back to object mode select my armature and then switch to pose mode don't forget pose mode is under your pull down menu in the upper left hand corner and you can also set up a, some quick keys for that some hot keys all you have to do is right click on the menu option and you can tell it to change shortcut or create a shortcut if you don't have one in there and try to avoid conflicting with something that already exists because it can cause you problems and then quickly test it and as you can see it's now moving our leg no problem and notice that we just have the left side moving even though this is a piece of mirror geometry it assigned the weights correctly it did left and right without issue